the biggest decision that you can make is to say, show me you. Show me you. Because when you understand who God is, you will then understand who you are. And he says, come just as you are. You're weary, you're burdened, you're brokenhearted, you're scared, you're afraid, you're nervous, you feel inadequate, you feel lost, you feel broken, you feel betrayed by whatever. If you've been in church and you haven't come back to church because something happened in your past, show me. Show me what's next. Show me what's new. Be brave enough to say those hard words. So I wanted to show you. So like I said, I was cleaning my house and I came across some journaling that I did. Um, and I thought this might be a good word for somebody out there. Um, this was, I was journaling about a Goliath. And um, so I'm just going to read. I just have it typed out in my journal. So I want to read this to you. And um, again, just hoping this is a word of encouragement for somebody out there. Do you have a Goliath in your life? Not a huge intimidating bully, but something standing in your way to victory. Your something could be any number of things that we all struggle with, something. To list just a few, pride, anger, jealousy, fear, doubt, position, illness, pains, past, and the list goes on and on. Fear has, a stronghold, has had a stronghold on me most of my life. For me, the thought of ever getting back on a plane seemed unattainable. Sure, I had flown my entire life, but after this previous experience, driving seemed easier and a safer option. America was a beautiful countryside. We will drive wherever we wanted to go. Well, I knew better. God wasn't going to let me not conquer a Goliath. I actually wanted to be able to fly again. During the initial months, of the thought of being on a plane actually made my heart skip, skip a beat. Seeing a plane simply fly by overhead made me lose my breath. And this is no joke. We can talk about, we can rabbit trail over that a whole nother time. Um, for those who don't know my whole story, that's okay. Um, in my strong will, backed by the courage of God with my soul, I set gaze upon the skies and learned to identify the plane as safe and convenient. Our family loves to travel, always has. What this means for us is that we can no longer fly because of me. There would be great limitations of time and money, available locations with so many friends spread across the states, conferences and ministries I want to attend and lead in other cities. How would I miss out on so much? I wanted to get back on the plane and one day I will fly and I will not be bound. I will fly again. Can I just tell you he has answered that prayer. <laughs> Show me. He showed me. He showed me. Okay. I got to keep reading because I got to go. Okay, step one, believe God can do anything through my imperfections and fears. Step two, have faith to do it. And here I am, I am already anticipating sharing with you great victory that is sure to come. And can I tell you, this was written in 2009. I've got frequent flyer miles, that's all I'm gonna say right now. God is, <laughs> he's so good. Okay, everything God does is purposeful. Everything is under his authority, under his timing, which is always perfect. Look at creation. It took six days, not one. Noah didn't build an ark in one day. The earth did not flood for one day. Jesus' coming was foretold for many years. His ministry on earth was not easy, and it was 33 years. Saving all of humanity by the sacrifice and death of God's only son on the cross took three days, not one. He didn't rise again immediately upon dying. It was three days later. He waited for his father's perfect timing and rose again on the third day. Jesus promised to come again, and guess what? We're still waiting for that day. His timing will always be perfect. He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1. Are you patiently waiting for the Lord, or are you rushing him to come quickly? Do you remember playing with dominoes as a kid? It's fun to come up with crazy designs across the table, down the books and into the floor. It takes five times as long to set it up than it does for us to perform the amazing display of rhythm. It doesn't take much to start the fascinating display. It takes one small gentle touch to begin the chain reaction. It just takes one. Have you submitted yourself as a piece for God to place you in his perfect design for your life? 
Be assured you are needed as part of his great design. Have you purposely lined up yourself alongside others so that you might touch the lives of those around you or are you standing too far away? Maybe you have fallen and never gotten back up again. Will you be the one that he uses to start a chain reaction for the enchantment of the kingdom? <laughs> Breaking down boxes that I threw downstairs. Will you allow our beautiful, creative, purposeful God to place you in an intricate design so that you may impact the life of those he crosses your path with? You may be saying, well, I don't have much to share. There's no way God that could use me. I have rebelled against him for too long. He can't use me. Or I wouldn't know where or how to stand in the gap for someone else. These are the same lies I was being told too. It is false, it is fear, false evidence appearing, it is fear, sorry, it is fear, false evidence appearing real from our deceiver. Sister, be assured, God will place you in perfect harmony where he needs you. You just have to be willing to get in the game. Romans 8, 28 promises us, and we know that in all things, God works for the good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Show me, show me, show me who you are, show me who I am, show me the plan, y'all as you are show up as you are he is standing there looking for you waiting for you he has not left you he has not forsaken you he is a promise keeper he said he will never leave you or forsake you so i'm going to close with this i've got to go get the kiddos in just a little bit but i'm going to share this last word for you okay i want to read you just a little bit out of psalm those were my words that i wrote in 2008 to 2009 look what he has done he's showing me again showing me again his faithfulness of how good and powerful and gracious that he is and somebody else needs to be reminded that it's okay it's okay to not feel together it's okay to not feel settled it's okay to be scared it's okay to feel um, sad or mad or you know Whatever it is that you're facing that is keeping you from talking to him, ask him. Just say, God, show me. He'll talk to you. This is Psalm 86, uh, verses 8 to... I'm going to go to 17. We'll see where he leads me to that. And then I'm going to close out. Psalm 86. This is the ESV version. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord. Hashtag show me. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, insolent men have risen up against me. A hand of ruthless men seek my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me, hashtag show me. Give me your strength and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Oh, he's so good. Friend, I'm telling you, wherever you are, whatever you're not, whatever you think you can't, whatever you think God won't, pray those two words. Show me. And when he shows you, be open, be humble, be ready, because he's going to show you his awesome, awesome nature. He's a gracious God. He is not going to be mad that you came to church Easter Sunday 
in your hot mess express bus with or without your family with or without hair with or without cute clothes with or without makeup with your roots maybe not done your nails not all cute and pretty and pink he doesn't care he doesn't care go sit in the back row wear your gym clothes show up and just say show me and he will y'all we are fearfully wonderfully made but more than that we are all sinners saved by grace nobody is better than you and you are not better than anybody else we are only who we are because God is with us so anyway I hope this is a word for somebody I just got so excited when I found this and I thought you know what I know there's more me's out there so I hope this lands onto somebody's inbox that needs to hear it um, I just said, God, show me what you want me to do with this. And this is what he said to do. So this is, hi, hot mess express me. And I am telling you to trust him because he's trustworthy and he's gracious and he's good and he's amazing and he's loving and kind and forgiving. And he don't care about your hot mess. He can fix it. He can make the world. He can fix you. <laughs> he can handle your mess. I promise. Okay, I've got to go. It's time for me to get ready to go grab the kids and help get these beautiful Easter flowers into some water. Oh, you can see that the Lord is good. And oh, I think our prayers are even a sweeter, sweeter aroma than even these most gorgeous flowers to our Father. All right, God bless you guys, and I will see you, I hope, Easter Sunday. And I look forward to any testimonies that fruits that come out of this conversation.